Lynn here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner and our Lynn's Travels. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today is I am going to bring you my cruise report for our most recent nine day Southern Caribbean cruise. And I am also going to do a Delph Blue haul because that's where I got a good many pieces to go in my house. For those of you on my Country Craft Corner, you're gonna know what I'm talking about here, but for those of you on my Arlen's Travels channel, my everyday decor, as you can kind of see behind me here, is a blue and white decor. And it is what I decorate, how I decorate my house throughout the entire year and then I plug in like my seasonal decor, for instance, Easter or spring or summer uh, or fall. And for Christmas, it's a full switch out, but a uh, full switch out of decor. But for the rest of the year, I have been collecting blue and white pieces like I'm gonna show you here. And like you can kind of see behind me in the picture, you know, behind me in the room uh, of how I decorate my house and this Oh my goodness, this store is just perfect in Curacao. This store was in Curacao. But anyway, let's back up. First, I'm going to do my outfit of the day today real quickly because uh, y'all always ask me. So I always try to try to tell you what I'm wearing. Nothing is new in this uh, well, except for my little bracelet and earrings. They're new from Hobby Lobby of all places. Uh, but I have a pair of black ankle pants on, a black Amazon Essentials short sleeve t-shirt, v-neck t-shirt, and then a blue jacket from Timu. Yes, I got this from Timu. And uh, my jewelry is, this is Brighton from years and years ago. And then these hoop earrings and this little beaded bracelet are from Hobby Lobby. I found them yesterday when I was at the checkout counter. So I got them and uh, you can see that my hair is quite blonde right now, which I love, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it. And, uh, but I really got, it was, I mean, she had put some more blonde highlights in it <laughs> the last time I went, right before we left for our vacation. But, uh, you know, the sun really helped to bleach it out a little bit more and I absolutely love it. You can see I've got a quite a good tan right now. This is all natural uh, and I yes, I use, tons of sunscreen all the time. I just tan really easily. Uh, my uh, ring is my grandmother's ring. Uh, got handed down to me from her to my mom and then to me. And uh, the rest is the same. So, all right, let's get started. Let's get started. First of all, let me say that uh, this was not a planned for months and months and months in advance kind of cruise. Uh, I came out from getting dressed one morning and Chris said, hey Arlen, how would you like to go on a Southern Caribbean cruise? And I said, well, sure, I'd love to go on a Southern Caribbean cruise. What are you talking about? And he goes, oh, what about three weeks? I said, three weeks? Oh my goodness. So I had to reschedule my hair appointment and reschedule my nail appointments because they both fell within that when we were going to be cruising. <laughs> so thankfully I was able to do both of those and you can see I got my hair cut shorter. I'm loving this haircut as I said in my outfit of the day video. It is uh, much shorter. It used to be down to about here and I just think it lifts my face and brightens my face a little bit in combination with the blonde hair. I'm loving this. I'm 62 years old for those of you who don't know it and uh, I'm, 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 been, and I've lost 94 pounds. I had gained, let me tell you this, before I start in on this cruise, I had gained five five and about a half pounds. Uh, when I got home, uh, you know, the other day I was up about five and a half, six pounds. And I've lost almost five of that already. So I feel pretty good. I've lost 94 pounds total in the, in the last year and a half. So I'm really uh, being weight conscious and I, I didn't try to diet when I was on the ship by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but you know, I did watch, I think more my carbohydrate intake than I did my sweets. I really like my sweets. So anyway, let's get started. So, uh, Chris and I left our house. Uh, well, first of all, let me tell you, we, we both decided that we were not going to do any formal nights or gala nights. So we didn't need to, did not need to take formal wear. 
And we decided we weren't even gonna be eating in the main dining rooms because we've been on another Holland ship before and it's just the two of us cruising. And we really enjoy eating with others in the main dining room. That's more of an experience for us than just the two of us sitting together. And we prefer the buffet on Holland ships more than we do the main dining room. And that's just our personal preference. You may have yours and that's fine. And it's fine that I, we have ours, you know? So those are a couple of things that kind of made packing for this cruise very, very easy. I did take an extra, we did take an extra suitcase because I knew I wanted to go to this Delft Blue shop and we wanted to have enough room and a suitcase to pack everything that I bought. So, and we had plenty, we had plenty of room. So anyway, we left here two days before the start of our cruise. Our cruise, our cruise started on March the 8th. We left here on March the 6th, very early in the morning. And we drove, we drove from Fredericksburg, Virginia down to Fort Lauderdale, but we took two days to drive down. And uh, so we left about 5 a.m. in the morning and it rained and rained and rained all the way down through Virginia as we crossed over into North Carolina. Then we crossed over into South Carolina. Then we crossed over into Georgia and it was finally lightening up. And then we crossed over into uh, Florida and we stopped in Jacksonville at a uh, Hampton Inn. I was a little bit disappointed in this particular Hampton Inn. I usually really like Hampton Inns, but I this one was uh, a little bit older, I guess. The pillows were just awful in this place. I am, I, Chris says we're gonna shrink, shrink wrap a pillow of mine <laughs> to take with us next time. And I'm not even kidding you guys. I am really picky about, I like to sleep on a very soft feather pillow. I like to mold it around my face and I hug it and, you know, and I just, I didn't get any sleep that night. I didn't get any sleep. I looked a sight the next day. We went out for dinner that night uh, to Sonny's Barbecue. We looked it up. Chris went to the University of Florida, graduated from the University of Florida. He's a mechanical engineer, for those of you who don't know. And he loves Sonny's. Sonny's was one of his favorite go-to restaurants when he was in college. And so we looked up there. And those kids, the kids were so sweet in there. I told them I was a YouTuber and I took pictures of the menu. I can put you here. And, you know, I had a wonderful, this was kind of my first splurge. I was really good on the way down. I had Chick-fil-A grilled chicken and you know, I was really good. A fish sandwich from McDonald's one time. So I was really good on the way down. So this was kind of my first splurge because I had a brisket toasted cheese sandwich, something like that. And uh, fries and it was delicious. Every bite of it was delicious. Then we got donut holes that had like icing with them. Oh my word. Check my heart. My uncle used to say that all the time. Check my heart when he would <laughs> uh, eat something really good. You know, he's, oh my word, check my heart. <laughs> so that's what I was saying when I was eating those donut holes. So we had a good time there. We went back to the hotel, went to bed fairly early, you know, watched a little TV and whatnot. I was just, breakfast was not really a lot to write home about. Uh, it was, it just wasn't, I, I don't think I would go back there just to tell you that, that Hampton Inn in Jacksonville. Normally, I don't want to say anything bad about Hampton Inns because they're usually pretty good. So then the next day, anyway, the next morning we got up and got on the road after breakfast. We didn't rush to get on the road because we only had about four hours left of our drive to do. We did the bulk of it, you know, from Virginia to Jacksonville, Florida on the first day. So anyway, the next day we got right back on the road and we uh, drove down to uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And we, are, we stayed in the Spring Hill Suites by Marriott. Now we have stayed there before and we knew about this hotel and we, but between last year, last January of 2023 and this March of 2024, they have refurbished the place. They got all new furniture. They got all new flooring put in their rooms. It was in tip top shape. It looked wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. The bed was comfortable. The pillows were comfortable. <laughs> and we knew that the next day was embarkation day. So uh, just to let you know, we were able to leave our car parked there in the Spring Hill Suites parking lot. I believe it was $10 a day to leave. I'll correct myself if I'm, in, if I'm incorrect here. I have to ask Chris, but I think it was $10 a day. 
uh, to leave the car parked there. And so he found himself a good parking place and I have to say the car was absolutely filthy. By the time we got home though, it was just pollen all over it. It was just uh, awful, awful, awful. But anyway, regardless, we were allowed to park our car there, which we were grateful for. I did take my scooter on this trip, you guys. At first, I thought, and I told Chris, I said, I don't think I'm going to need my scooter. I'm doing so well. I, you know, as I said, I've lost a lot of weight and I'm doing really well and getting around and very mobile for myself around town here. I never use a cane or a, or a scooter ever around our home and in stores and everywhere we go. I don't ever use it, don't need it. And Chris said, Arlen, I would rather have it with us and you not use it than not have it with us and you need it. Well, I am glad we took it, you guys, because, you know, I kind of forget how I forget these things. I don't know because we cruise so much, but I, I, I guess I don't realize how big these cruise ships are. Y'all, these cruise ships are big. You have to stand at elevators. You, at embarkation, you have to stand. You have to wait in lines. You know, and I, I don't do well when I have to stand and walk for, you know, a, a long distance, you guys. So I was very, very grateful that Chris had kind of said, nope, we're taking it. We're taking that scooter. So, and it's not hard to take. It was not hard to take with us, especially driving, you know. So, and it fit in our room and I'll get, I'll get back to that. So uh, anyway, embarkation, uh, we took the, the uh, this, the Spring Hill Suites also has a cruise ship port shuttle so we were and you have to sign up for that when you check in to the spring hill suites you sign up to be on their shuttle and then the next morning the morning of embarkation you need to come down and you need to reiterate that with the lady who's in charge of the shuttles that morning so we did both things the shuttle was twenty dollars a piece and which was worth it to us that was fine you know and then we've caught the shuttle to come back to the hotel too so they, they do it both ways and it's great. So anyway, we got out of the Spring Hill Suites right about 1030 and it's very close to the cruise port. Got over to the cruise port right around 11, 11, 15. We were whisked right on uh, pretty quickly. We didn't really have to wait at all. Kind of walked in, went to registration, walked through, went to, you know, we had to stand in lines, of course, you know, but it, it wasn't horrible and, uh, had went through border patrol kind of and showed uh, we had to show our port passport because we were going out of the country of course and we were whisked right on now our stateroom was not ready at the time that when we when we boarded so we went up to the buffet the Lido buffet and I am telling you guys the buffet on uh, we were on the Rotterdam sorry we were on the uh, Holland America's Rotterdam and we chose this ship well Chris chose it because he looked for princesses ships and there was nothing available for the time he wanted to go he wanted to be able to be back here to work with his yard so we wanted to go pretty quick you know in early in March and it's it worked out great because it's just starting to bloom and his grass is just starting to, to grow so he knew what he was doing uh, and we had been on a, one other Holland America cruise, as I mentioned before. So this was the first time on the Rotterdam, though. The Rotterdam is Holland America's newest cruise ship, and she is a beauty. Now, I will say she has some different looking art throughout the ship, uh, you know, which I'll, I'll show you some different art pieces that we saw. And I kind of would stand and look at it and go, okay, what does this mean? There were no plaques with them or anything to kind of explain so uh, the staircases were really interesting. I didn't go up the staircases, but I could look up and you could see, you know, each staircase forward, midship and aft were all different. And with what they had, it was just interesting. There was a lot of interest. We didn't go to one show. We didn't go to one comedy, anything. We didn't go to one magic show. We didn't do anything, you guys. This cruise... And we agreed when we went, this cruise is was going to be for our relaxation. We did not want to be beholden to anything, to do anything. We wanted to relax and regroup and regenerate our little souls. Uh, but we, we really needed to do this because of the, the loss of our daughter. For those of you who don't know, we lost our daughter, our eldest daughter, at 39 years of age. To natural causes back in November. And I hardly can mention her name still without tearing up. And, you know, I'm not sure mom or daddy's heart ever heals 
for something like that, it just becomes different. You know, it just becomes different. So uh, that's why we did this cruise. So I'm not going to be talking about any of the shows. I'm not going to be talking about anything like that. I'll, you know, I'll tell you a little bit about the ship and I'll go through our days. And they were all, I'm just going to preface this by saying we went to the pool every day. We went to the pool, the aft pool. I think I took some pictures of the aft pool. I hope I did. <laughs> the aft pool. We laid in the sun, we swam in the pool, we got in the hot tubs, and we met other people, and we ate. That's what we did. There were four sea days on this cruise and three port days, uh, Curacao, Aruba, and then their uh, Half Moon Key is their private island. So anyway, so we embarked, we got into our room. Our room was a Vista Suite. And I would say it was about, for those of you who cruise on Princess, I would say its size was comparable to a deluxe balcony uh, on one of the newer ships, you guys. So that's what I would compare it to. And I will put up a stateroom tour maybe this weekend. Uh, it was a challenge to get my scooter in that doorway, only because I felt like the hallway was a little bit more narrow. So I did have enough space to kind of you know, pull out and then get myself turned enough so that I could get my scooter in. No, we do not get ADA uh, rooms. I don't need any other aspect of an ADA room. And I don't want to take up a room where somebody else who really does need it, needs it. Why would I go in an ADA room if I don't need an ADA room? You know, I am perfectly fine. I just can't walk for long distances or stand in line for long, dis long, you know, long periods of time. So Chris did have to help me several times to get the, the scooter in. I take the arms off of my scooter though. So be sure if you do use a scooter, utilize a scooter that you do take the arms off uh, before you take your scooter or measure your, your scooter. And there are guidelines on all the cruising websites. So I'm not gonna go into cruising with a mobili mobility scooter right now. Uh, I've, I've done a video about that. But anyway, it fit in the room and we were able to put it in a spot in the room. This room is very well appointed, had a very small bathroom, but a big shower uh, and with a with a footrest in it. And you could look straight through the room and see out onto the balcony. The balcony was quite a nice size, had two chairs, two ottomans at a table out on the balcony. I had a little couch. We had a little love seat that was very comfortable. Uh, the bed we had pushed together as a queen king, however, whatever size that is to push those two beds together. And it was pretty comfortable. It wasn't quite up to what I feel like Princess does with their dream beds, uh, but it was, it was pretty comfortable. Their pillows were not, it was either a really hard pillow, big hard pillow, or the smaller pillow, I felt like it was a balloon. When I hugged it, I felt like I needed to, it, it was like, boom. I felt like it was a big balloon at my head and it wouldn't give, you know? So I was like, ah, I'm going to take my own pillow. I'm going to figure it out, you guys. Uh, but anyway, it was, you know, it had a lot of USB ports. It had a lot of uh, places to plug in. It had reading lights beside the table. It was very well appointed. Very, 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 very nice room. It had a vanity place. It had cabinets. It had a little mini fridge. It had like a... a mini bar area where we sat the ice bucket. We had our steward take away, there was a bottle of wine and a bottle of water and um, a bunch of stuff in the mini fridge. There was bottle of wine, bottle of water sitting with the ice bucket. We had him take that. If you if you partook in any of that, you would have had to, we would have had to buy it. And everything in the refrigerator, we would have had to buy it. So we had him remove all of that. Above the ice bucket, there was a cabinet with shelving and glass glasses. Uh, it was lovely. It was tons of storage in this place. Tons and tons and tons of storage. So, uh, lovely room. Lovely room. Cannot complain a, a bit about that. So, hey guys, I'm morphing in here with a little bit of footage. I forgot to tell you about some beautiful tiles that we got. Uh, Holland America line is celebrating 150 years in service, being in service. Look at that. And everybody who has, you know, I, I think you have to have cruised. It's got a certificate of authenticity. You know, I'm not sure if everybody got one or if just those who have cruised on Holland America more than once have. 
but aren't they pretty? It says here a note for you. Hang, hang on, let's see. It says, uh, we would like to extend our most sincere gratitude for your loyalty. As a token of our appreciation, please accept this Delft tile exclusively created for Holland American Line Mariners by the Master Craftsman of Royal Gjodwagen <laughs> in the Netherlands. I'm sure I... I'm sure I butchered that. Since the 1930s, their nautical creations for our line have become true collectibles and keepsakes of our guest cruising memories. We look forward to welcoming you back on board Holland American Line in the very near future. Warmest regards, Mariner Society. So you, the like, um, Princess is the Captain Circle. It is the Mariner Society on Holland. And we got these, I got, we got two of these, two of these tiles. So one for each of us, you know. We also went up a loyalty level to two, we are two star mariners now. <laughs> and we'll be there for a while. I can't remember what the difference is. You could Google that if you want. But anyway, here's a picture of our little pins and uh, that we got. So that was pretty cool too. So I wanted to mention those couple of things. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. Uh, we got in there. Our luggage was delivered pretty quickly. Oh, muster station wise, we just looked on the back of our door. We aren't familiar with Holland and how they do things as much as we are with Princess. So we had to refresh our memories. Uh, we had to look on the back of our stateroom door, figure out where our muster station was, and then take our little cruise card to, in which they don't have medallions or anything like Princess does. They have, you get your cruise card. But the good thing about the cruise card is they have a hole already punched in it. So it, I had a land, I took lanyards with me and they hung right, it, I just clipped it right on my lanyard and I was good to go. Went to our muster station, had them uh, scan the card, then came back to our room. By the time we got back to our room and we were watching our safety video on the TV, which is what you can do, just come back to your state room, turn on your TV. This is the first thing that'll come on. You have to watch it before the, everybody on the ship has to watch it before the ship will set sail out of port, you know, on embarkation day. So we did that and then our, our luggage was delivered. We unpacked lickety split. I have packing cubes and all that and I just put everything in the drawers and hung everything in the closet that I wanted hung up, put my shoes away and we were ready. I'll tell you, we put the suitcases fit under the bed and we were off. Uh, first two days were sea days, uh, which, and as I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail as far as what we did, because we really didn't do that much. We really did get up, go to breakfast, went to the pool, and uh, usually we skipped lunch. I will say that we didn't eat three meals a day on this ship. It was just too much. We did it for the first couple of days, and I was like, whew, I'm just eating too much. So we ended up starting to skip, stick, skip lunch, excuse me eat a pretty early breakfast, but skip lunch. And then we ate dinner about 5.30 when the buffet opened, you know, and um, that's all we did on the, I mean, we, we, we did ride around or walk and ride around the, the ship and explored the ship and kind of learned where things were and what, you know, venues were offered. We went to the shops and looked at the shops and there really wasn't anything I wanted to buy other than I did purchase my daughter a couple of things which I can't show you because she might watch this. <laughs> so I'll tell you after I've given them to her. We haven't seen her and, and Maverick yet. So, uh, but that's all we did for those two sea days, you guys. Honestly, this may be, you know, you guys say you don't mind if you if I ramble along here. <laughs> that's probably what I'll be doing in this one because we really didn't do a lot. Uh, anyway, I've already talked for 22 minutes. By goodness gracious, can you believe it? Uh, the rest of the cruise, though, the next day we, we pulled into Curacao. At yeah. Curacao and at Aruba, they brought a pilot on board to, you know, to maneuver, help maneuver the ship through the local waters there. And we pulled right up to the dock in both ports. And uh, Chris and I, the morning of Curacao, went to the pool because we were going to be overnighting in Curacao. This is the first time we've ever done anything like that on a cruise. But we overnighted in Curacao, which was really nice because we were under no pressure to go off early and get back by a certain time or anything like that on that very first day. And so we went to the pool. We had breakfast, we went to the pool till afternoon, came back and showered and then went off and went into Curacao. And uh, it, it's, it's a lovely little port. We didn't go too far afield that day. We went to where we knew the Delft Blue shop was. And it is, uh, it used to be a fort, it looks like. And you just kind of go through this archway and you go in and there's all kinds of different shops. 
and the Delft Blue Shop is one of them. And I really made a beeline to that. And then I went across the street and uh, bought some stuff for, for family members across the street at a t-shirt shop and whatnot. So I wanna go ahead and show you what I got from the Delft Blue Shop. I'm gonna go ahead and haul all I got from there uh, on this particular day. And so let me go through that real quick. Uh, first thing I put my eyes on was this beautiful platter. Isn't that pretty, you guys? And I don't know whether I will use this to eat in <laughs> or whether I will use it to decorate with. I'm really not sure. It might be a little bit of both, but there you can see uh, the Heinen Delft Blah, Delft Blue. There you go. And it is just stunning. I don't remember how much this was. This day I spent everything I'm gonna show you it cost me $126 American dollars, no tax, just $126. So that's what I'm going to show you. And I don't remember each specific thing unless it has a price tag on it. And this doesn't, done it, doesn't, but I love it. So that's one thing. Then I got this. Oh my goodness. Look at this. It's a little, can you see there? Three, it's got like three little spaces. Isn't that pretty? Nuts mints, Reese Cups, whatever, or M&Ms of three different varieties or something like that, who knows. I will probably use this to serve things in though, for sure. I do a lot of, you know, uh, people come by a lot, the kids, my dad, other people, you know. There you go, Holland, Delft Blue. I just love, love, love this stuff. Absolutely love it. So that was that. Then I wanted to show you how they wrap things up even. Look at this. They wrap things up so nicely. And something blue for you. That's what that says. Something blue for you. So let me open this up and I'll show you what this something is. So I got this little house. Look at this. Now they had different houses in there that had different color roofs that looked more like Curacao did. Curacao was very colorful. Very, very colorful, very pretty little town. Uh, and, but I wanted just the blue and white houses. So I got two, two of them. I could put in a tray design, up on a hutch, who knows where else. But I thought these were really super, super pretty. There you go. This is the real thing, you guys. Absolutely love it. I got those. Again, for those of you who follow me on my Arlen's Country Craft Corner, you'll know that I do a blue and white tree in my living room. And so I had to get a little ornament to go on the tree. Isn't that pretty? So, and look at the little Dutch people. Get in! I just love it. <laughs> Dutch farmers. I love it. I don't remember how much this was, you guys. I just don't remember. Everything added up, like I said, to 100, and what I say, $126. So then they also had jewelry there. So you see, I got these from uh, from Hobby Lobby. They were $4.99. These were, I think, $15. I do remember that. And look at those. And they're the real thing, you know? So I'll be wearing those. Aren't they cute? Little earrings. And then one more thing on this day, we did go back the next day and I'll show you that in a minute, but one more thing in memory of our daughter, got a little angel ornament, Christmas ornament, but I may keep this out all year round, sit it on a table, hang it on a, on a knob of one of my hutches, something like that, just to keep this out. So, the detail is amazing on these pieces, you guys. I did not purchase the hand-painted items. My goodness gracious, a vase, a hand-painted vase in there was like $1,300. There was another one that was $500. Some smaller ones, like this big, that were $350. And I was like, um, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> So anyway, I eyed uh, some big vases up on a top shelf that day, and the vase itself was $143. 
And I was like, oh, Chris, I really would like one of those faces. And he was like, no, 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 you've got enough, blah, blah, blah. So I am very grateful that we overnighted in Curacao because the very next day, <laughs> we did the same routine and we went back off of the ship and there were, like I said, there were two vases up on the top shelf. I sent a, a little, I did a little post in my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group, by the way, if y'all are interested, Arlen's Country Craft Corner and Travels. Y'all are welcome to join me in there if you'd like. You'll get more information. Like I was bringing all of these folks along the whole way because they are people that I definitely have vented, uh, vetted. These are folks that I've definitely vetted and I know more personally, you know, so if you are one of those that you know me personally, but haven't, not personally, but you know, you know me and you've interacted with me a good bit and you think I might recognize your name, you're welcome to join my Facebook group for sure over there. Uh, but I put up the picture, a picture of both of the vases that were, that they had up on the top shelf. And I was like, oh, I just don't know which to do. I'm, it's a conundrum. I just don't know what I want to do. And because there was a white with blue and then there was a black with lighter blue. And I was like, oh. I got so much of this, you know, I have a lot of this between the other times that I've been there and I have a lot of, I have several vases in this design and now I've got more. So the very next day we went back off and this is the face I chose. I chose, I chose. I chose the dark one, the black one. It is black, it's not blue, it is black with blue, with a kind of a, a medium blue and then a light blue and then a powdery blue. It is stunning. So if, for those of you on my Arlen's Travels channels, if you'd like to see how I style this, come on over to my Arlen's Country Craft Corner channel next week and I will be styling this on a tray. I'm gonna do a tray design here on my kitchen island. So isn't this absolutely stunning, you guys? It is absolutely beautiful and yep it is different it is different and that's why i chose this one i chose it because it's different they have a bridge there in curacao that that opens uh that pivots open on uh, that was an engineering marvel that chris loved we ended up going across that bridge that was moving riding over a pontoon bridge and you can see it moving up and down and side to side and what it does is swings open when like a ship like that cruise ship there wants to get through it will swing open look at this curse house so pretty guys we are moving up and down and up and down so neat while we were on the other side it actually uh open to let a tugboat through which that was really cool for Chris he was love that and then we came back on and then you know went to the buffet and just kind of hung out and we watched movies every evening they had a lot of good movies on and we just hung out together we just sat out on our balcony as we sailed along and the the cool evening breezes and the sun sets and the sun rises and oh you guys it was so relaxing. It was so relaxing. Uh, the next day we were in Aruba. So we did get off and it was quite a walk just to let you know where we were moored up. Of course, I don't know where you would be moored up if you went into Aruba, but where we were moored up, it was quite a little trek into town. I would say about a half a mile walk into town or scooter, I scootered. Very easy scooter ride, although there were some cobblestone streets, you had to be careful. And some of the sidewalks were tilted. So be aware of that if you do have a scooter, if you have mobility issues. Uh, we did buy some more things uh, and it is a pretty beautiful, beautiful town and clean and uh, kind people, very kind in both Curacao and Aruba. And the waters were, you know, that turquoisey Caribbean, turquoisey blue. No, we didn't go to a beach. Nope, we didn't have a desire to go to a beach or anything like that. We went back on the ship and same old routine. The next couple of days also were sea days. So the same old, same old, you know, again, I don't have a lot to tell you about specific things on the ship or even different eating menus or anything like that. This, this cruise was not designed to do that sort of thing. We really didn't really have a desire to do any of that. We really just wanted to enjoy one another. 
We didn't even get off at the at the Half Moon Key, uh, which was our last day on the cruise. We we watched the tender go back and forth. I could have gone. Uh, usually, when you have to tender a port, you cannot take your scooter on and one of the ship's tenders. But they did have bigger tender tenders, and I had one of the Rocky, one of the uh, uh, worker or one of the waiters there, tell me, "Oh yeah, you can take your scooter." But you know what? I decided not to because I just don't like to give anybody extra work. And I know it's extra work. It would be extra work to get that scooter on board and they'd have to carry it on or they'd have to maneuver it on. And I just was not interested in putting them through that. So, and I wasn't interested in really going over there. Although I hear the buffet was wonderful and uh, it was really good and all of that. But, you know, maybe one year again, we'll go off. But this year we decided not to again, again. Oh, aren't we boring? <laughs> So we sat there and watched the tender go back and forth. We were at the pool and it was really neat to go to the aft pool with nobody else out there. There was hardly anybody else out there. Uh, by the way, I met Vicky. Vicky, hi Vicky. I met Vicky, uh, who has been one of my long standing subscribers. And I was literally in the uh, buffet talking to one of the wait staff, just interacting with them. And she said, she was sitting like at a table across from us and she said, I know that voice. I know that voice. That's Arlene. Where is she? And she looked up and I and I got done talking to him and I just happened to glance over and here she was pointing at me. <laughs> and I pointed back at her and went, hi. And she went, hi, is that you? And I was like, well, if you is Arlene, then yes, it's me. And she went, oh my gosh. And she was all excited. So here Vicky and I are. <laughs> in the buffet that evening, had a wonderful time. And that day at the private island, we were actually at the pool deck together. Her and her husband, Kelly, and Chris and I were all, you know, laying out there talking and interacting and having a great time, you know, together. So I also met another lady on board. Uh, you know how you just, you get to, well, I do anyway. I'm a chatty Kathy and I you know, everybody is so kind. Most people are kind. Most people are kind. There was a, a, a group of people that um, were not very kind to me. Uh, one day I had my scooter. Well, I'm not, you know what? I'm not even, I'm not even going to give them the breath it takes to tell you about them. I'm just going to tell you about this lovely, lovely lady that I met. I met her, I was talking to her cousin. I didn't know she was her cousin at the time, but I met her cousin in the pool and in conversation, she said, oh, well, she lost her daughter. Um, I think she said 15 years ago. And I said, she did. And I, poor that poor lady, I practically just left her side, left the conversation. I said, could you please excuse me? And I swam over to her cousin who had lost her daughter. And I said, I just wanted to tell you how sorry I am that you lost your daughter. And my husband and I did too, and she grabbed a hold of me and she hugged me like she'd known me forever. And I hugged her like I'd known her forever. And we were kindred spirits like that, kindred spirits like that. I appreciated her. And some of you subscribers said, well, it was a God thing. It was a God thing that he brought her into your life. And I believe that I needed her. I needed her. Uh, she and I spent many hours a day, you know, eat, you know, not every day, but now and again, talking, chatting, commiserating, crying, understanding, all of that, you know, and it was so nice to meet her, you know, it was so nice to meet her and her husband and her cousin and her husband, you know, so we met so many nice people. The crew on the Rotterdam was absolutely stellar. Uh, we met uh, many of the wait staff, Wika and Ria. And one, oh, I can't pronounce your name if you're watching. I can't. O N E Onisimo, 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 I think. And Clark and all of you guys at the buffet there, thank you guys so much for being so kind to us. And thank you guys for such great, our great, great wait staff, our steward, Sigit and Day. There are two on Holland. He has, Sigit was the main, and then Day is his helper. Both of those fellas were absolutely phenomenal, kept really good care of us. Thank you, Sigit. Thank you, Day, if you're seeing this. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mwah! to all of the crew on the Rotterdam. Wonderful captain, wonderful crew, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience. Again, the Rotterdam was beautiful. The 
the damn ships, excuse my language, D-A-M, you know, that's what they're called, <laughs> are absolutely stunning. And inside and out, they're so pretty to look at. And we just had a wonderful time. So we disembarked the next day after we were at Half Moon Key and I scootered off. We got on the, found the shuttle with no problem, went back to the Spring Hill Suites, ran in, went to the bathroom, came back out to the car, and we drove straight home. We drove straight home. I was getting a cold. Yes, I was that last day, uh, or the morning of, the morning of. I started sneezing and it got worse, you know, as we drove home. So Chris drove all the way home. Bless his heart, we took a lot of breaks, but he drove all the way home. And uh, we got home right around, we left Fort Lauderdale at like nine, I wanna say 9.15, stopped for lunch. We didn't stop until about 11.30 for lunch. And then we got stuck in two traffic jams. We got stuck in two, one that was over half an hour long. Uh, terrible wreck, I hate to see it, but terrible wreck. Uh, they're in Georgia, I believe, right about the Georgia and South Carolina line. And then we got another one as we got into North Carolina, but uh, that was more like road construction kind of stuff going on. So we got stuck in that one for about 15 minutes. So we were about 45 minutes later than we thought we would. We pulled in into their garage right about midnight, right about midnight on Sunday night. So, uh, and that was it. That was our trip. You know, uh, again, it was uh, one of, of restorative nature one that I so appreciate Chris surprising me with, even though I really didn't have time to buy anything. A couple of things, I, you know, for those of you who may be uh, fixing to do a Caribbean cruise, I wish I had taken three bathing suits and I'm really glad I took three, but then we also did unlimited laundry. You can't do your own laundry on Holland. So Chris had um, procured us unlimited laundry and you send it out in a bag every day. And um, which if you do that, it was like $75 for the nine days. But if you do one bag by itself, I think it's like 20 or $25 per bag. Well, we sent out a bag every day. And for the first couple of days, it came back that night. And then a couple of other days, it took a day. They say they'll have an evacuate within 48 hours. But anyway, I took three bathing suits. And I'm glad I did because I was in the pool a lot. And my bathing suits did not dry overnight. I don't know what it is about those staterooms. But the they, same thing happened on the Emerald when we were doing the Panama Canal cruise, they just something about the, the air in the room or something, I don't know what it is. And I'm not one to hang my stuff out on the balcony or anything like that. I don't think you're supposed to do that anyway, but I'm not one to do that. Uh, and they do have a, a clothesline in the bathroom, but then the bathroom gets steamy when you take showers. So anyway, I'm glad I took three because I had enough to, to rotate in and out. I wish I only took two cover-ups. I wish I'd taken three. Other than that, I wore every stitch of clothes that I took except for one pair of knit capris and one little jacket. Everything else was on my body. I planned very good, very well. And of course, used my packing cubes and my packing folder and all of my Vera travel bags and all of that stuff. And we did great. We did great. Just, you know, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time away. Highly recommend Holland America. Uh, I really, really do. It is, uh, they, they treat you well. It's, it's, a, it's, it's um, not a party ship. And now a lot of people say, oh, Holland America is only for old people, uh, is only for old people. Well, I'm 62, I'm getting up there. But I'm thinking when they're, when they're saying old people, they're talking like old and decrepit and can't walk. Well, let me tell you something. These 80 and 90 year olds were getting around better than me, some of them. And we saw tons of kids on this ship. Not tons, but I would say probably 30 kids at least, ranging in age. Now, we didn't go to the midship pool because that's where all the kids went. You know, it, the bath pool was adult only, and that's where we stayed. Not that I don't like children. I do. I love children. Uh, I don't like adults who don't rein in their children sometimes, if needed. I will say that. I'm just going to be really honest. Uh, you know, I was always a strict mom and made my, my children behave when they were in public and they knew how to be kind and thank you and no thank you and you're welcome and here let me hold that door for you and here let me hold the elevator door for you and you know, all the kindnesses that you teach, every all of us teach our children, you know, but you'd be surprised. Hmm, some of them are not taught that, you know. Anyway, uh, 
you know, when all was said and done, it was a lovely group, but I didn't see that many old, 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 decrepit people. Sure, there were some, you know, but then there were just as many that weren't. So I, that's a misnomer, I think, you know? But anyway, that's it. That's all that I wanted to talk about in this one, you guys. I've talked 45 minutes. I don't know whether I can cut it down. I see 45 minutes on my, on my time there. So anyway, I'm going to shut this one down. And as I said, if uh, please do come over and subscribe at Arlene's Country Craft Corner if you're interested in our, our home decorating. That is the bigger of my two channels. If you haven't subscribed here at my Arlene's Travels, I would sure appreciate it if you did. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm not monetized on this channel, uh, on my Arlen's Travels channel, because this is the channel that I share all my stateroom videos and stuff on Facebook, and they don't like you to be monetized for whatever reason. So, uh, anyway, uh, I, I would appreciate subscriptions everywhere you want to. I am monetized over my Country Craft Corner, and I'm really trying to grow both channels, you know, of course. Uh, but I would love to have you. I would love to have you in my little YouTube family or families. You know, so and if you ever see me out and about on a cruise ship or out and about in town or wherever, please don't ever hesitate to come up and tap me on the shoulder or say, hey, is that you? Because I love meeting all of you. I love meeting you. I love giving you hugs and chatting with you and having a good time. Right, Vicki? Right, Mary? Right, all of you guys? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go into my final words. Come back next week to Arlen's Country Craft Corner where I'll style this beautiful vase. Yes, I'm going to style this in a tray design. I think it's going to be super pretty. So come back for that next week. And I may get the state room tour up, uh, as I said, this weekend. Anyway, thank you guys so much for stopping in here today. For those of you who might be struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.